the add instruction for example if you are adding a plus b in javascript or if you are adding a plus b in c plus plus this instruction with when it gets compiled as a machine code necessarily does not is slower for js and faster for c it's not that hey everyone welcome back and in this video let's just talk a little bit about why some languages are slow and some languages are fast and what is the difference between them let's go if you're new here make sure you leave a like to the video subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to receive daily updates about programming web development and all the coding tech space on codedam this video is a part of codedam's t-shirt giveaway program for the month if you want to take part and win an amazing code damn t-shirt all you have to do is leave a comment on this video about what you think and that's it you are eligible if your comment gets a heart from code damn you will win a t-shirt for absolutely free all right before we get into programming languages speed let's understand what a language a programming language actually does and the spoiler here is that no programming language is fast or slow the programming language which generates the machine code is either simple or complex. What do I mean by that? Let's say you have a program which takes an input and gives you an output, right? This is an input, this is the output. Now what this program does in order to generate that input that can be simple depending on some logic or can be complex, right? So let's say I give you input as two and the output is four, right? The input as four, the output is 16. The input as 8, the output is 64. You could probably guess what the program is, right? I mean, just looking at the data, it seems like the program squares the number, right? But it could very well be just squaring the x minus 1, which is the number you supplied, and then adding, you know, whatever the square of this is, x square minus 2x plus 1, and then just adding 2x and then removing minus 1. So this is also going to give you the same output right now this is an overly simplified way of representing a program but this very well might be a c program this very well might be a js program or a python program or you know some sort of language which you think is slow right again i'm saying this is an oversimplified example so don't actually get your feelings hurt that you know why javascript would generate this code and when c is generating this it's more about how your code your programming language gets compiled into the machine code which is running on the hardware right and this thing this decision of changing the code and writing what instructions is done by the compiler right so mostly we have two sorts of languages in computers the first one is dynamic language which is like your js your python and you know so on php for example and the other ones are statically type language which are c c plus plus right so these are a few examples the difference is the dynamic language do this compilation part from programming to machine code on the runtime that means as and when the code is coming in into the engine the compiler engine or whatever execution engine you want to call it this conversion happens on the runtime and again i'm excluding the jit mode for the sake of simplicity for this video maybe we can do a deep dive in some of them but you have to understand in general if you're talking about dynamic and static the way it works is this engine right here which is doing this conversion for dynamic languages it does it on the runtime that means the reason that is required first of all understand let's understand that the reason that is required is because dynamic language are flexible in terms of data types right so your data types can be flexible let me just give you an example on this for example in javascript you can have an array like this and then you can have a property on this array with a 0.5 as the index inside of a string and you can set this to some alphabets or whatever i don't know right or you can also access an array of 0 1 2 3 right or 4 for example when in your code when the code is running when this js code is running your execution engine the chrome v8 or whatever spider monkey whatever it is it has to determine whether this is a call for the index of the element or you are doing a property lookup and so on and so forth right so it's it's a lot of work to do on the runtime similarly if you're trying to access a of three it has to see if the value exists then return that if it does not exist then return undefined and so on take a look at c on the other hand if you create an int array first of all you can see that c actually restricts you you know on the very start that you have to specify that this 
is going to contain only integers, no long, no floats, nothing like that. So there has to be no memory lookup in terms of whether this is a string, whether this is an array, whether this is a boolean whatever then you have like for example a couple of numbers even if you do a lookup like a of four or three i mean as long as you know you're using a generic array as the data type you would see that this is continuous in the memory for the most part at least for you as a programmer and when you are accessing this by index it just simply access the next block in the memory, right? Obviously, assuming your operating system allows the access for this memory, but you can see the things are much more simple. When you have a static type language, things are usually much more simple. And this has the advantage that the code which is generated here in the output is also simple and short, usually compared to your dynamic type languages because there have to be multiple checks in here, right? So inherently, the add instruction for example if you are adding a plus b in javascript or if you are adding a plus b in c plus plus this instruction with when it gets compiled as a machine code necessarily does not is slower for js and faster for c it's not that it's the checks which javascript performs before and after or any other dynamic language performs before and after that contributes to the slow running of this whole thing right because i would not consider a plus b result as a valid result until and unless that function returns me right so those checks which are done before and after this they are kind of contributor to the slowness of these languages right compared to c and c plus plus obviously for c and c plus plus you can see you're pretty much doing all this work and compiling it to the machine code and you're able to make optimized decisions because already have the data types of what the results would be what the input would be if you are doing anything wrong that has caught on the compile time and so on and so forth but of course i mean Static languages and dynamic languages have their own use cases. You would not want to use static languages for building. I mean, you wouldn't want to use C for building a scalable web server. I mean, you can, but if you're doing a Hello World project for your school, it's probably best to go with Node.js or Python server or something like that. On the other hand, if you're writing an operating system driver or a file system, it makes much more sense for choosing C, C++. Rust is also like a huge candidate, which I'm a fan of. So languages like these, they are pretty useful when you're doing low level code or optimization or where speed really, really matters because you're doing a lot of compilation and a lot of computation every single second, right? Not compilation, just the computation part. Also, just to quickly touch up on, are these languages then bad? No, of course not. Like I said, when you're developing a software, there are two important parts. The first part is the code speed and the second part is the dev speed, right? A developer, speed is i think probably much more important than the speed of code on a lot of cases right if you are creating a company if you're creating a product this matters probably much more than what you can do here because code speed this code can be ran on multiple instances together somehow if this is parallelized and you know made serverless or stateless or just scaled to multiple cpu cores then you can pretty much get much more performance than running a statically typed language on a single server itself, right? But this developer speed is more important because you need to develop and ship not only quality software, but also secure software, which you can write and iterate faster, right? And when you pick up a language like Node.js, for example, or when you pick up frameworks built on these languages, you get a lot of added benefits of the work already done by the community for you in terms of security, in terms of ease of use in terms of how you how fast you can ship this stuff and so on right so i do believe like never really consider a language alone for your project consider the speed as a developer you can get or you know the speed as a team you can get when you're building a particular project with that language so that is all for this video hopefully you understood some of the context between dynamic and statically typed languages why statically typed languages are usually faster maybe we can do a deep dive in just in time things as well and how that works so let me know in the comments below if you like this video what do you think about this what are your views are on this topic that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon